Welcome back to Entertainment Talk. Today I'm here to do my review for the second season of Hannah on Amazon Prime. Do a spoiler free review. Uh, so I'm going to go to my ratings system straight away. Skip, don't skip. Um, I'm going to give this a don't skip rating. I think this is a very, very good second season of television. And, uh, you know, I think if you've seen the first season, you should definitely go ahead and watch this as well. Um, if you, Sorry, if you've seen the first season, you should definitely watch the second season as well. If you've not started um, Hannah, I definitely recommend both seasons. A very, very good uh, show from what they've done so far with both seasons. Um, so let's go to... Because I've got some, some very positive stuff to say about the season. I've got a few negative things to say about the season as well. I think I'll, I'll, I'll get the negative out of the way first of all. This season tries to do some brave new things. Some of which actually pay off really surprisingly well. Some of which I do feel gets a bit messy and a bit muddly. And I feel like sometimes in this second season um, they they try to make things a little bit more complicated than what need, than what they needed to. I think uh, I I applaud the show for trying something different and ambitious in a certain way, and certainly something different from what they tried in the first season. You know, you still got the core of the show. You've still got Hannah developing as a character. You've still got uh, Marissa, who's in this season as well, which is really cool. Um, but they they try to do this sort of like deeper conspiracy stuff in the second season, and they try to involve. Basically a whole bunch of new characters. And some of which are quite, kind of cool. Some of which slightly less so. Um, there's a few char- few new characters that sort of surprised me as well. Um, and you've essentially got Hannah going to this camp of sorts. I'm not sure exactly what, you, what you're supposed to call it. This, this new training camp of sorts uh, in this second season. And she meets a bunch of new... Um, girls that are also being trained is basically this this group of this massive group of young girls that are being trained you know for military type missions if you will and uh some of these characters are quite girly some of them are a bit more hardened if you will and then there's other sides to some of the more girly characters that comes out later like you've got a bit more of a mixture of teenage drama type of stuff but not in like a cw way not 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 anywhere near close to to something like that and don't get me wrong i love a lot of the cw shows but that is one of their network's problems i suppose as well riverdale i'm looking at you (laughs) um it doesn't go anywhere near that level of things of like soppy romance you don't really get any of that here hey guys what's up this is donnie and i host the adulting with donnie podcast And this is not the show to listen to if you're trying to be a better adult. I started this podcast as a way to offload some thoughts uh, that I have throughout the week. My topics vary widely every week. Movies I've seen, guns and gun control, sex, people that are stupid, why I don't care about celebrity opinions, TV shows, snowmobiling. The list goes on and on. I'm always taking topic suggestions from fans of the show too. So join me each week on Adulting with Donnie as I pour some bourbon and allow you to see the inner workings of the mind of a madman. Live free and rant hard. I'm Christy. And I'm Jackie. And we are Killer Fun. We explore the intersection of crime and entertainment every other week. For as long as people have been communicating, they have been talking about who did what to whom, and is that socially acceptable? Because the boundaries of society, crime, and entertainment have always gone hand in hand. The more salacious, or weird, the better. From books and movies to television shows and games, we look at how life and art imitate and inform one another. And we can't get together and not laugh. So let's face it there's going to be laughing <laughs> killer fun is available anywhere you listen to podcast so join us today's sponsor is koalu if you'd like to get started with a domain name and a website today just click on the link in the show notes and that will take you over to koalu to get started they also have a live support chat system that you can use which is in the bottom right hand corner so get started with a new website and domain name today with koalu Hey everybody, if you would like to get the ad-free versions of all of our podcasts and support entertainment talk along the way, all you need to do is head over to patreon.com forward slash entertainment talk, sign up either as a creator or as a Patreon, there's no difference there. 
that's just the option for either becoming a creator now or just staying as a patron for the moment and then all you need to do is support us at the one dollar level tier that will get you access to all of the ad free podcasts that we've done in in the past and get you access to all the ad free podcasts in that month as well so it's a great way to support us on entertainment talk and to get rid of the ads and get your ad free podcasts You can also become a patron at the $3 level tier that gets you access to ad-free podcasts and allows you to redeem a review of a TV show or a film of entirely your choice. That's one per month for either a TV show or a film review which is at the $3 level tier. As always, thank you very much for listening. Back to the show. But you do get some teenage type stuff that surprisingly works sometimes for this season and sometimes doesn't and the interesting thing as well obviously Hannah's still our main protagonist for the second season is you kind of are not in not in the same way of what Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist does it but you're kind of there with Hannah experiencing it in the same way because Hannah's kind of more connected to the audience than what these new characters are and you can kind of we can relate to her in that way if that makes sense because she's one of them she's definitely one of the well she's not really a girly girl so to speak um like she's you know much more battle hardened and and that sort of thing and like i said some of some of these more girlier sort of characters do change uh later on as well um so you've you've kind of got that going on but you're sort of experiencing these new characters with hannah because she sort of feels uncomfortable and like she doesn't belong there and she sort of doesn't but she's been put in the situation regardless um so that's kind of i mean it's it's a negative in a way because sometimes it doesn't work but sometimes it kind of does uh i don't have the, the only other negative thing i've kind of got about the season like i said is sometimes they try they try too hard with some of the deeper like oh this conspiracy that conspiracy and we've got this list of this stuff and this person screwing over this person and then that really escalates towards the end part of the season uh especially in one particular episode i'm not gonna say which episode but uh, in one particular episode um and they they just try a little bit too hard and they didn't quite need to do that quite so much like you could have told the same storyline but simplified it a lot more and gone along with uh that you, you could have put it in a lot more of a simpler route as opposed like in in more of in line with what season one tries to do a little bit more but again i I applaud their ambition here sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it is what it is uh where hannah exceeds is again where it does in season one with the action and i'm not saying that this is a mindless popcorn action flick kind of thing this is this is more than that um, because there is still some story, some ambitious story stuff here that does pay off particularly well. Um, and even with, like within the action and stuff, and you can see like who's trying to, you know, who's after who and who's trying to kill who, and you've got uh, the the thrill of the chase kind of thing going on. Um, and uh, that that's really really exciting. And I I kind of feel like this second season should have tried to do more of that than this deeper sort of story stuff. Don't get me wrong, this deeper story stuff that I've that I've kind of talked about doesn't like break the season or ruin the season. This is still a really really good season of TV. And like I said, you shouldn't skip it. I recommend that you watch it. Um, especially if like me, you're a fan of this type of uh, espionage sort of drama, like a Twenty Four or a Jack Ryan. I haven't seen. Um, What's that? Alex Ryder? I haven't seen that one yet. Um, Less so Homeland. Homeland's a lot more political than than action-driven. There's action in there, but you know what I mean? That sort of espionage um, type of genre. This still very, very much succeeds at doing that, and uh, in some really, really good ways. It's very thrilling to um, watch Hannah continue to pull off these action scenes, and especially like some of the armed guards that she goes up against, and I'm not saying, obviously I'm not saying Hannah's weak at all, she's a complete badass and uh, I think that she'd give, she'd give certain big characters out there a run for their money, certainly. But what I mean is when you've got Hannah running around with a pistol, like a hoodie, tracksuit, trainers and you've got these guards who have got like all this armour and stuff on and she's beating them and it doesn't feel unrealistic either, I feel like because of 
well going all the way back to the start of season one how much how much this girl has been trained it is believable i'm not i'm not saying like oh this this girl who's running around in like a tracksuit and a hoodie shouldn't be beating these guys they play it in a way that's realistic and you do buy that hannah's very very well trained uh so it's always thr- thrilling to watch that sort of stuff and to see not just the thrill of the chase but like okay where is sure hannah's trying to get away with uh, away from these characters sometimes with other characters as well and where is she going to go what is she going to do what is her plan is always quite interesting and the show is really good at that uh, marissa's really great in the season as well uh, she's uh, in, in the season and stuff, and that's really, really good. Um, her kind of conflicting story with Hannah, I think, is told really well. Um, there's a couple of moments in the season as well where, like, the audience knows what's going on, but the characters don't quite. And uh, some of that stuff collect, connects uh, Marissa and Hannah together. That stuff's really, really good. Um, yeah, again, the show's just great at action. It is good at telling, like, a deep story, but I felt like they just tried slightly too hard um with this season uh, it has been renewed for a third season which is really good as well so that's uh that's some good stuff uh well spoiler free did i want to say about this season um like i said you know th- these new characters are interesting and they do develop in the season um but uh yeah it's it's still a great season of tv i do think the season one is slightly better I think one of the main reasons is because it does season one does lean at least from what I remember season one does lean a lot more on the espionage uh action stuff but also incorporates you know an actual story in there it's not just a mindless action flick um so you got that going on as well so not quite as good maybe as season one for the stuff it attempts but again I implored their ambition with their attempt to, to do that sort of stuff so yeah, a good season overall. Uh, I don't think I've really got anything else particularly uh, spoiler free. I really want to say. Um, yeah, it just escalates as the season goes on. There's some really great stuff in this season. And uh, I uh, definitely still enjoyed it. So looking forward to the third season. And we'll see what they have to deliver. They have set up, of course, a couple of threads for the uh, for the third season. Which is really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing how they play out. And um, there we go. So, uh, but for those of you who have or haven't seen uh, the first or the second season of Hannah, uh, let me know your thoughts on the season. Did you like it? Did you not? What did you think of these new characters? What they try to sort of incorporate and uh, how that kind of went for you as well. And how do you feel about the action for the second season? I feel in some ways the action in this season is better than the last season, but they're trying different things in this season uh, with, with that sort of thing. So let me know what you think. Anyway, Matthew at Entertainment Talk dot org, Twitter E Talk UK. There's a contact page and information in your show notes. Let me know what you thought. I'm going to give the season. Uh, I'll give it a nine. It's still got some really, really excellent stuff here, but just that one little, th- those two little areas, the the deeper sort of attempt at storytelling, and sometimes these new characters don't quite work so much. But you're experiencing that with Hannah in a way. So. There we go. Uh, But that's it. That's pretty much it for me today. Thank you very much for listening. You can find everything that we've got on entertainmenttool.org. If you'd like to support the podcast and Entertainment Talk, that would be really great. Um, You can uh, find us on Patreon, the $1 and $3 level tiers on there. Uh, So that's for the instant podcast, ad-free podcast, and review options as well. Amazon affiliate link if you're shopping on Amazon. We can get a small cut of what you spend. It won't cost you extra. iTunes feeds, please rate, review, subscribe to those. Uh, Just search for Entertainment Talk on your favourite podcast platform. David's on iTunes as well through Geek Town. You can search for uh, Geek Town on there. Get yourself uh, subscribed to both Entertainment Talk and Geek Town as well. Uh, Geek Town is a course for your TV and film news. Your up-to-date, reliable TV and film news. Uh, If you want the weekly Geek Town radio episode, Episodes, those are released on Tuesdays, uh, both available on geektown.co.uk and on Geek Town Radio as well in weekly format. Uh, Bex is streaming daily on Twitch, Trista Bytes, Trista, B-Y-T-E-S, go and follow her on there, subscribe to her, that's some really cool stuff over there. So go and support her. Word of mouth, you can tell people that you know about the website and the iTunes feeds, uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, share it, all that, all that good stuff. Facebook groups if you can as well. So there's that. Uh, Thank you very much for listening. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.